In this tutorial, we're going to be creating and formatting and taking a pretty deep dive into Seaborne heat maps and why this Python library is really powerful for visualizing tabular data. So after this section, after this slide, we'll look into almost a quick time lapse showing what we're going to do, which is essentially just taking some sample data that's already present within Seaborne. We just need to import it so you can follow along directly. And then from there, we'll clean the data, pivot it a little bit so it's in a nice tabular format and iteratively improve on our heat map. So before we do that, why would we want to use Seaborne heat maps? Well, they're really useful when working with large data sets um, because we can quickly identify patterns. Sort of here, we've got density of passengers um, over flights and they can really be used for a wide variety of applications like exploratory data analysis, regular data analysis, data viz, machine learning, data science. Um, so it's a really great thing to get used to, get to grips with. It's quite intuitive. So I'm just going through now what we're actually going to cover, which essentially importing some data. We're going to get into that nice pivoted format. And we're going to just go through and create lots of heat maps until we're at this final stage where we've iteratively improved on the on the initial almost out of the box heat maps. And I'll go into a lot of the customization that you maybe don't see across some other tutorials. So here's the actual main main block that we're in the code build. And I'm just in Google Colab because it's easy to use in a web browser. So anyone of any level can follow along. You can go to colab.research.google.com uh, and set up from there. But the first thing that we need to do naturally is just import our dependencies, which are Seaborn, and we'll use matplotlib as well. They go really well together. They're built on top of each other in tandem, um, and we just alias them as SNS and PLT. Now, the first actual step that we're going to do is load in our Seaborn data. So we can just use the sns.loadDataset function and take flights data and we'll just show the first 15 rows and the reason i want to do that is show you the way that the data is initially constructed so essentially it moves down by year and by month in just a very sort of calendar like fashion now what we want to do is actually almost sort of group this and turn things around so we're going to need to use a pivot because what we're going to want to show is all of the years across you know almost um the columns and then we're going to want to show uh, the rows reflected by months so that we can almost set things up so that we can start to visualize that density of passengers so we can set the index as month we can set the columns up as year and then we can set the values as passengers obviously our most important metric passengers there well the core metric in visualizing sort of the density of how that flight data is impacted as our months and years roll on and we can just type data and as as i said we'll get the years along the top here reflected within the columns and the month which we've marked as index will essentially be reflected as rows now that we have our matrix set up, we can actually go ahead and look into building a heat map. Because although this information is valuable, it's not the most intuitive way to display it if we were to lend ourselves to quick insights. We can see here things like as the year increases, naturally it appears that the passenger volume increases. We can see some trends right now. We're in the summer months, as we'd expect, the volume increases. But we really want to... Uh, go ahead and lend this to the eye a little bit easier and give everyone the ability to have immediate insights. So we'll go ahead and build a Seaborn heat map. Now we can go ahead and build sort of the standard out of the box Seaborn heat map, which really only takes a few lines of code. <clears throat> and you don't even necessarily need to go into this level here for the first, um, first heat map, but I'm just going to assign my heat map here uh, my heat map object so essentially i'm assigning it to ax which is just just common practice to assign it against the axis uh, and we'll see why later when we're trying to set a lot of different customization within it so i'll set that equal to sns.heatmap which is just us sort of uh, creating the heat map itself and we're passing through data which is the the sample data that we imported think of that as a pandas data frame if you want that's just our base data and then we're going to set the X label within that heat map. So we're referencing 
referencing the ax uh, variable that we've previously set up and we'll name the x label flight year so the label for the x axis the horizontal axis and the label for the the y axis the vertical axis as flight month and then we'll just use plt within matplotlib to actually go ahead and show this plot or this graph and that's all we need to do to actually set up our initial heat map however there's a lot of issues here with the initial heat map First of all, the, the months are shown vertically, so very difficult to read. The size is off, it's too small. Um, the flight month and flight year, well, the flight year is okay, but the flight month, uh, Y label axis is vertical, not good practice. It's very hard to read vertically. We want that to be horizontal. The heat map color isn't great because the density doesn't really show anything. When it's that level of colors, you ideally want it to be one gradient, and you know that the darker um, colors indicate more values. Or, or more density, yeah, more values. Um, and we've also got the the um, color bar. Again, we don't really want that eventually. We'll add some annotations or some text to display what each cell means, so we won't require that either. So let's copy and paste that code, and we can look at how we can add a lot of different customization um, to this next iteration of our heat map. So the first customization we can actually go ahead and make is actually adjusting the size of our plot. So this fig size or the size of the figure, the size of our graph is actually calculated as a tuple um, by width and height. So that 12 and eight, we're actually adjusting. Um, and that means 12 inches wide and eight inches high. So it's just a tuple of width and height. Um, and that is calculated uh, by inches. So that's the units of measurement. So we're going to adjust that to make it larger. That will stretch most of the, the screen for now. Um, and we could just go ahead, we create the heat map as normal. And now we're actually going to make things horizontal. So the first thing that we want to do is actually go ahead and adjust the tick labels to horizontal for X and Y axis. Now the tick labels just refers to the actual labeling across the Y axis and the X axis. So that might be you know, 1956, 57, 58, there will actually points to what each individual cell means. So each individual cell in the heat map is a cross section of the month and year. So we might have 1959 and December. So we want to adjust those to be horizontal. Essentially, everything needs to be horizontal as well as the labeling for the X and Y axis. But if you were wondering what tick labels means, uh, that's essentially what we're doing. And when we set the rotation to zero here, that means that everything's going to be horizontal, essentially. So we set the X tick labels and we use get X tick labels, set the rotation um, to zero, and we can copy and paste and just do the exact same for the Y tick labels. And that's fine. So that's the first uh, method we've got for setting those horizontally. Uh, and we'll want to do the same with the the X and Y labels, which is essentially the axis titles for the X axis and Y axis, so horizontal axis and vertical axis, uh, respectively. So the first thing that we'll actually do as well is label pads. So we'll add a bit of padding. So we'll just set that equal to 10. You can feel free to play around with that. Um, and I'll copy and paste that um, to reflect the, the Y axis titles as well. And that will just give us a nice little margin um, to separate uh, everything nicely. So in the line above, we've essentially set the, the labels to be horizontal. Um, so we can we can mark that there within a within a comment if we want. Now the next step that we can actually take is just to specify some coordinates to be a bit more specific about where we're actually placing our label titles for the x and y axis. So I can use ax dot x axis dot set, and then we'll do um, label coords there. And within there that we can just specify the actual screen coordinates that we want and we can just copy and paste for the y axis as well. Um, you'll notice here that I copy and paste the exact same coordinates which initially um, will obviously place the, the titles on top of each other but we can simply amend this within the next um, the next plot that we use. So we've made a few changes. We've taken the uh, figure size and we've adjusted that to the size of the graph. Uh, we've set horizontal tick labels and our 
label titles and we've started to set the coordinates you'll see here it's already starting to look a lot better uh, but we'll mend in the next graph um, that flight month and flight year um, just to demonstrate that we can essentially set those coordinates uh, those titles to wherever we like uh, but we'll simply substitute um, the values of the y the y axis out so that we can make everything obviously uh, more reflective and cleaner there's still a couple issues we've still got that color bar uh, almost a legend color bar that we don't want the color isn't great uh, because the color doesn't really indicate us to sort of density like i said we want that to be along a gradient uh, a title would be good with some padding as well for our graph so we'll go ahead and adjust some of this in our final iteration to get to the final product in this sort of seaborne deep dive uh, that we're that we're going through currently so we've got the heat map uh, however within here we can specify some more parameters within the the axis label so currently uh, we've just passed through data which is essentially uh, our base data that we've imported but cmap will specify us a new color scheme so we're just going to use blues and this is going to give us what we desire a sort of almost a white uh, gradient scale right along to a dark blue where the density or the higher numbers will automatically be assigned um, as a as a deeper darker blue so that will be immediately lend itself to the eye for for better insights anot equals to true just specifies annotations um, and we can specify uh, anot underscore keywords just equal to the size we'll need to include single quotation marks there uh, for the mapping and that will set the size of our our words within each individual matrix cell or or numbers rather which is just going to show the volume of passengers that we have by that flight data and color bar is equal to false c bar we'll just get rid of that almost color bar legend and line width one and equal to white is just going to give us a light separation as you can see here uh, between the elements of the matrix and that's gotten rid of that color bar so everything's starting to look a bit lot better and you can see uh, with that and we'll look at this after but with that darker uh, gradient blue it becomes immediately um we're immediately able to visualize trends so we can visualize that um obviously the summer months tend to be busier in terms of passenger volume but we can also visualize uh, by the year how that gets darker so we're seeing a positive trend as the years go on with regards to the amount of passengers so we can substitute that y y axis label coordinates to clean things up a bit and get that showing correctly so there we go we have flight month with a bit of padding that y axis label we can see the nice hue of our colors um, and we have the flight year reflected correctly so that's starting to look good and much better than before where it's still very hard to get any insights from the standard color scheme that we're giving or we were given from seaborne so what we can do now is set a title for our graph so that's very simple to do as is a lot of the sort of uh, setup here for a seaborne heat map so we'll include some additional details for our font size and for padding so we'll go ahead there and we will use axe but what we're actually doing is just accessing the sort of seaborne heat map object and we'll set the title so we can just specify within uh, single or double quotation marks the, the text that we want to display there uh, so we can just do something pretty descriptive but not not too um not too long so we'll just say view passenger flight traffic figures we can set the font size equal to whatever we like you can play around there i'll just go 14 and y is just going to give us sort of that vertical padding that we require just to give us a bit of bit of space 1.05 is a minimal amount of padding uh, you can play around with that if you want but there we go we get we've sort of sorted out most of the issues it's very clear the graph which in data visualization is what we want uh, we've got the nice separation now with the line widths we've got the the tick labels set horizontally the titles we've got some padding uh, everything's very clear the color is very clear so we can visualize the patterns we can see that summers tend to be busy so july and august um, does pick up again in december uh, for christmas time i imagine uh, and flights for the holidays and into january that trend will continue uh, but we can see a really positive trend as the years go on which 
generally would be a good high level indication of the of the success of our of our flight business as we as we move forward and as you can see there wasn't too much code to get to this final product we've got the heat map size some parameters when we're setting up the heat map but nothing too complex a bit of customization to go ahead and set everything to be horizontal but if we look at the itera iteration of the original heat maps there's a large improvement and all we really needed to do was was set up and pivot that tabular data that we imported so if you found this helpful feel free to like comment subscribe and share thank you